hello there and welcome back to another review. So today we're going to be having a look at one of my all-time uh, favourite movies uh, from my childhood. I absolutely love this movie, so many fond memories of it and I thought it's my channel. Do you know what? I'm going to review uh, one of my favourites and that is 1988's Willow, directed by Ron Howard, produced by George Lucas and starring Warwick Davis and Val Kilmer. This was one of them movies that I saw on TV when I was about five or six years old and absolutely loved it. And I still, had, like I mentioned, have huge fond memories of this movie. I think if it's one of their movies, like especially kids, family movies, where I think if you don't like Willow, then I don't understand you. You know, <laughs> I really don't. But I absolutely love this movie. So many fond memories. Any film where Duke, like George Lucas was attached always had the curiosity from people at the time. Films like Howard the Duck, Labyrinth he was involved with. This was his take on sort of the fantasy movie, the Dungeons and Dragons, Lord of the Rings type of idea. And like with many movies, it didn't necessarily do overly well, but it was a movie I think that really found its home and its audience and following on home media market and sort of when it was on TV. And it was one of the movies like, oh, Willow's on. Got to watch Willow. Like just, it, it just had to see it. And it, I was so curious about it. I remember when it was going to be on TV and I saw the trailers and I, the, we, uh, my mum recorded it for me and I just absolutely couldn't wait to see it. And I, it lived up to everything I wanted it to be well especially the me being about six years old at the time I think Lucas claims he had the idea even as far back as 1972 now what makes Willow work for the most part is that Warwick Davis and Val Kilmer put in such amazing performances and our two really do have amazing chemistry as Willow Offgood and Mad Mardigan like the, these two especially Warwick Davis they really really do um, fit into these roles exceptionally well like so good the, without Warwick Davis's performance and Val Kilmer's performance this film would really have really have suffered but because of our two leads who have great chemistry because they're really have, they have great roles the characters are so likeable you're invested right from the get right from the get go you have to take into account like I think Warwick Davis was only like sort of 18 at the time uh, when he does this and like I say does an amazing job the music by James Horner suits the movie perfectly and watching it again recently it's amazing how much they do cram in to just a two hour time frame like they really Ron Howard and George Lucas really do cram so much into this movie and actually what you could say is actually quite short especially compared to sort of today's standards we have a baby that needs to be returned which is sort of like sort of focuses as Willow's version it's sort of Willow, you could argue it's Willow's version of The Ring. Uh, you could argue we have action, we have romance, we have comedy, and what is great is most, most if not all of the comedy does work. Like there's no sort of moments where you sort of rolls your eyes at something like the comedy. Most of the jokes do land, and they land really well, which is great, which is absolutely great. Um, Though it is set in this fantasy setting, and make no mistake, this is a dark movie, but the characters have the right amount of banter and funny moments that it grounds the movie more and allows you as a viewer to enter the world a lot easier. Lucas apparently even approached Warwick Davis about Willow during the production of Return of the Jedi, and obviously had worked with Howard before on films like American Graffiti. Who was, I mean, Ron Howard at this point was slowly becoming sort of a great director in his own right. He had like sort of cuc like cocoon under his belt at this point. Obviously, he'd go on to do films like Frost Nixon, Apollo 13, and loads of other movies. Um, but I think, right, Ron Howard, I think he was very, at this point, he wanted to do a fantasy movie. And uh, I think George Lucas wanted to give it somebody to somebody he could trust who was sort of, you know, on the same page as him. I know to say now a lot of fantasy movies at, at the times. If you look at movies like Crow, um, Labyrinth, even Legend, which I reviewed just recently, they none of them done all that well. Like fantasy movies were not necessarily the thing to do. They were not necessarily uh, guaranteed money makers. It would ever. I think fantasy films at the time were very much a gamble. I think by and large, fantasy films you could argue in general are always a bit of a gamble. Um, you know, either they do really well or they flop or they do well later on but at the time films were not doing that that well made like not as financially successful as the filmmakers would have hoped we have Jean Marsh here as the evil queen Bab Morda who is just as evil here as she is in uh, Return to Oz and is a great villain it's one of their movies that if you know if it was made by filmmakers now it would be they would easily make this at least about three hours 
or at least in two parts. There were sequel um, books in the Shadow War trilogy, and of course I won't go into the TV series today, which was such a shame. Uh, the people behind that totally missed the point of what Willow was. Uh, but the original movie, like the original movie, will always have a special place for me. You know, it isn't pretentious. It doesn't take itself too seriously. It's never boring. The characters are great, and to me personally, will always be one of my favourite fantasy movies of all time. I think looking back, when you look at criticisms of this movie back in the day, like it's slow paced and Howard has bad direction. Honestly, like I, you read things like that, like sort of some of the reviews that come out at the time, and you think you you really didn't know how good you had it back then. You really didn't know how good you had it because I think the pacing of the movie is great. I think Howard's directing is fantastic, and I think. You can probably tell, gushing over the movie a bit, absolutely love it. But I say, when you, you know, it, it really was a phenomenal effort uh, for all involved with this movie. So the film opens and it is a time of dread, we learn, which is all you need to know. It's a time of dread. That's all you need to know. Like with Star Wars a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. It's all you need to know. You don't need to go anything more than that. Like here is just a time of dread. All you need to know. And there's this child prophecy that will bring about the downfall of the evil queen, Bav Morda. Simple setup, Lucas doing a fantasy setting, let's go. So Bav Morda is on a mission to seize all pregnant women in the land as they may be carrying the child that will sort of bring an end to her reign. And one of the wit like midwives smuggles out this baby who bears the mark from the queen's castle. And Saoirse, the queen's daughter, is tasked with finding the baby. The mum gets killed and after being attacked by these dog-like wolves, uh, she sort of sends the baby downstream. You will notice right away, even just with that initial setup, the high production values, the music, the setting, and the save, and a, a really a great score here with Willow, which really accompanies the film so, so well. And as I say, even that, just that initial sort of uh, prologue before the movie starts, you're in. You know, you're totally, totally in. But make no mistake... Like with Temple of Doom being a darker movie, like with Empire Strikes being a darker movie, this is a dark movie. This is a dark movie. Like Legend was a dark movie, this is a dark fantasy movie as well. But this film, like, unlike Legend, this film really does have some funny sort of film like moments that did actually make me laugh out loud um, when I was uh, when I was young. So as I say. And that, so this baby comes downstream and Willow and his kids are now wins and they find the baby. We meet Burglecut who is like high, he's sort of on the village council and he's always giving Willow a hard time. And we, we, we meet uh, like Willow, let's say his kids and his wife and his family, his wife being Kaya. And I love Willow, he's like under no, he takes, finds this baby and he's like under no circumstances whatsoever is anyone in this family allowed to fall in love with this baby. And of course they all do. Um, so, of course, the baby, Alora Denham, loves Willow, and he's sort of like a farmer come wannabe magician, sort of the underdog of the village, but you love this character right away. He's a family man. He just wants a normal, quiet, honest life. He wants to do more for himself, but uh, the, the, he's got morals, he's got values, and it's somebody you can get really get behind. We have the eye old win played by Billy Barty, who I always fondly remember from, the film, uh, from this film and as well, Masters of the Universe. So he's like a local wizard looking for a new apprentice. Their village gets raided by bad mortars dogs. And these things, absolutely, they scared the crap out of me when I was younger. I think it's because you don't really see them as such. Like, you see these dog-wolf type things. But you never really get a close-up of the face. So you're not really sure what they are. But these are ferocious things. As I say, they scare the crap out of me. I say never could, usually, but by and large, because you don't really clearly see what they are, but this ferocious, ferocious devil. So Willow and Kaya, after the attack, agree to take the baby to the village council. The Aldwin says the baby should be taken to the crossroads, like the crossroads, where to like find like a human to like look after it. And Willow has companions in Migosh and uh, Von Kaya and Burglecut is appointed as sort of, sort of the leader of the party. And think of Migosh as sort of Sam to his Frodo, okay? Sort of Migosh. Think that's what Migosh is to Willow. The Orbin gives Willow some magic acorns, is told that he's, like, he has potential. The film just oozes sweetness and charm in a lot of scenes, and that is something a lot of movies nowadays are definitely lacking. As I say, this film isn't pretentious, it's not even predictable, and that's what's so good about this movie. Kai gives Willow some of her hair before he sets off. We have the badass General Kale of Bad Morda's army with his skull mask, and that is one warrior knight you definitely would not want to go up against. And what is funny is the Queen is warned that her daughter will one day betray her, right? She's warned about this. So sort of it gives away a plot detail that you're going to know is coming. The fact that she's already aware that her daughter might sort of do the dirty on her and go against her. So you're sort of, you know, they intentionally sort of give away the plot for some reason. Like they had no reason to say that. 
Like she came back and ordered, they had no reason in the dialogue in the script to say, one day my daughter will betray me. But they, you know, they do put it in there anyway. But I think you, I can't stress enough how much they do cram into the time frame of this movie. I really cannot. It really, like this was made now, easily would have been pushing three hours. We get some wonderful exposition shots as Willow and crew are on their journey. I think a lot of it was filmed in Wales and New Zealand. At the crossroads, they meet Val Kilmer caged up and Burgle cuts had enough as they've done their bit and wants to go home. Willow and Migos stay as they want to give the baby to a daikini, which is sort of Willow law for sort of tall people, um, as the Nowins call them. And I love as well how they actually make, and this is such a small thing, but I love how they actually make Val Kilmer's teeth dirty, which is another thing filmmakers very seldom do now, if it's in like olden times or a fantasy setting or whenever it may be, uh, with the time where they wouldn't have access to sort of hygiene and teeth brushing and things like that, but they actually make Val Kilmer's dirty. And straight away, you get the great chemistry and dialogue between Willow and Mad Mardigan. Like, right, as I say, they bounce off each other so well. And I love when Kilmer sort of fake cries as he wants some water. So Eric and his troops come by, sort of he knows uh, Mad Mardigan says his Bad Mordor's troops sort of like sort of crushing everything. And he knows Mad Mardigan. He won't help him. He's like, like Mad Mardigan sort of like a rogue. And he served Galadorn. Don't just love it when names and places are thrown at you, which mean absolutely nothing, but you just go with it anyway. Um, who cares, right? So Willow and Migos let Mad Mard go now as he says he will look after the baby and find a woman. They think their mission is done, and on their way home they get attacked by brownies, which are basically like the borrowers. There's a lot that George Lucas borrows from sort of, you can tell he's borrowed it from sort of other things he's read or heard about or whatever it may be, and sort of just puts all them elements that he likes into a movie, which I think is what a lot of the great filmmakers do you know they borrow bits you know take what they like and then they put their own spin their own uh, sort of shine on it and just like i say make it their own i tell as i say just borrows a bit of everything but let's say that's in a way his genius way he makes it his own so they've also stolen the baby then this angel comes down reveals the baby's name and that she has chosen willow to take take her to tiris lean willow doesn't want to so to rope him in she is like well the queen will kill your children and village otherwise so Willow at this point is like, yeah, actually, do you know what? I will do that. I will take her to Tira's Lean. So he sets off and fight, and he's got to find Finn Rizal, who's like a sorceress, and Migosh goes home. Now, I always thought like Migosh would stick around to the end, but no, but he goes home too. I thought Migosh was going to be like his Sam, you know, like he's there to the end, Willow and Migosh, but no, he goes home as well. Oh, and Willow has a wand now. Willow's been given a wand. Uh, so Rule and Frangine come along their journey who are the, like the brownies played by Kevin Bollock uh, Kevin Pollock sorry <laughs> and Rick Overton and uh, or Overton and I love how and in Rule takes some of his like this love potion ends up falling in love with a with a cat which is pretty weird but he, he takes some of this potion and falls in love with a cat uh, Willow falls through a wall and finds Mad Mardigan dressed as a woman has been like with someone's wife and her hubby is like and I quote wanna breed he says to her like Ew. So Saoirse comes to the inn and Mad Mardigan, like, he's smitten right away. And, of course, a fight and chase breaks out where Mad Mardigan proves his loyalty. Because he doesn't give up the baby, despite his rogue and he's a bit of a mercenary. Despite the, the rugged roughness of Mad Mardigan, he is, as I say, he is a good guy. And he didn't give up the baby when he could have done. Real fun, awesome, like, like horse and cart chase where each wheel sort of breaks off one by one. Great score and really gets the tempo of the film up and the blood flowing at this point. Willow now wants his help as he got them out of travel. Uh, Bad Morda getting more and more impatient. I swear at one point when Willow is experimenting with the wand, I don't know if you know if you've seen the film, if you know it really well. He's experimented with the wand because he's sort of it's all new to him, he can't get used to it. And I swear he makes a noise like a jawa. He make I swear he makes a noise like a jawa. But if you've seen the film, you probably know the bit, bit I mean. So they get to the lake, find Finn Rizal, a sweet moment where Willow thanks Mad Mardigan and he tells the baby to look after Willow. It gives the characters heart, like they're, you know, despite what they've said for each, to each other and despite the fact they do bicker and argue quite a lot, they do actually care for each other. And, it, and nothing seems rushed or forced between the two, like it progressed really naturally. There's nothing where it's like, oh, suddenly they're best friends. It's like, it really did, the way it goes along, it, it, it's not sped up, it's not too slow, it just goes along at a really nice pace. So Willow paddles out out to see Rizal who's been turned into a possum and shows her his wand and again I can't stress enough how well and strongly like Warwick carries the movie. So Bab Morda's men catch them and Mad Mardkin at this point not sure why she had to capture them though as she only wants the baby you know she wants the baby I don't know why she had to capture like them as well in 
in what makes sense is just take the baby you could just do away with them completely but as there are leads there are heroes they have to be kept alive um the brownies make me laugh though at one point because they decide to follow they're like well this is more fun than going home which then they just sort of there's this shot of them sort of running after it's like no do you want to go home he's like no this is more fun then you just see them both sort of running after them which i thought was quite funny and think of these two as sort of like your R2-D2 and your C-3PO of Willow. They're sort of the comic relief. And it's, it, you could argue it's a bit hit and miss. They're not exactly laugh out loud funny, but they do keep the film like uh, sort of uh, how the film is quite light. You know, they, 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 the comic relief is there. And I love as well even little things like Mad Mod can help him Willow by putting him on his shoulders. And at camp, Willow is trying to turn Roselle back to human form. So we have the whole good witch versus bad witch thing going on too. Though I swear Kilmer's teeth look a lot cleaner at this point in the movie you know i noticed these things mad mardigan gets dosed with this love potion he's tripping balls right he's absolutely tripping he's tripping big time to care like declaring his love for Sorsha. she sleeps and he goes to get the baby what gets me is rather than ride through the night to the castle like bad mortars men just set up camp and just decide to have a sleep they, they set up a proper camp sorsha has got like a night clothes on they're just having a night you would think i have got the baby that is going to bring about the downfall of my mum. I'm just going to keep riding until we get home. But no, they set up camp and they just, let's say, have a snooze. They get the baby back and Mad Mardigan actually kicks ass at this point, spinning his blade and all sorts. And we have like an Indiana Jones-esque action scene with our two, like, two heroes sliding down like the snow on a, shield, on a shield. And I say Indiana Jones, as you can see, there's like quite clearly dolls uh, being used in places. Always funny that Mad Mardigan comes off as well and comes down the mountain in a big block of snow, which probably was the funniest part of the movie for me when I first saw it. The fact, like I say, Willow gets down sort of the mountain of snow quite easily and then you, he looks up at what's coming down and it's just Mad Mardigan sort of in this big block of snow with like his feet sticking out as well, which I thought was, I'd say, really funny. It just didn't make, although it took the edge off what was like quite serious, it does say just, um, just really funny stuff. I'd say, especially with the feet sticking out, um, as I say, just super funny. Um, so they run into Eric, who is hiding from Bad Mortar's men, and not sure why they caught up so fast. The men they take sort like Sorcia hostage, like uh, Mad Mardigan does. She escapes, and they get to Terraceline, and it's deserted. Though Mad Mardigan finds a hell of a load of weapons and some sort of like royal armor. Uh, Bad Mortar's men turn up now, and like and some trolls as well, which Willow uses his wand on, which of course turns it into like a twin-headed dragon on these trolls. Which even as a even as a kid, I thought, how come? Like, it's used this wand on this troll, and it, it just turns into this great big sort of double-headed uh, dragon. I mean, they had to get the budget in, right? So that's what we get here. Um, so Sorcerer is all smitten for Mad Mardigan now. She she sort of swaps sides, and they really could have done with fleshing this character out a bit more. As Willow, when you look at when with Sorcerer and Willow, they really don't actually speak at all. These two characters, like... You could argue Sorcerer is, you know, she's part of the team. She's part, like, when she switches sides, turns against her mother. She doesn't, her and Willow really do not have much dialogue together. Um, as I say, which, he, like, Willow doesn't even question, like, um, why she is helping. So Cal Skullface gets the baby and they go to Bad Mortar's castle where they all get turned into pigs as she plans to kill the baby. Willow is like, we can't win. And Roselle just says, transform, tra transform in, I will destroy her. And Willow's like, okay then. Where she turns into human form, played by Patricia Hayes. And I love how they all get turned back from, like, they get turned into pigs. They get turned back from pigs and no one seems to even speak of it. So Roselle and Bad, Bad Mortar have a showdown, a bit like Gandalf and Saruman. I don't even think Sorcerer and Willow, as I say, even speak at the end of the movie. The ending is fine, but it benefited from having one big battle rather than they would sort of go for two smaller-ish ones. Bad Mortar gets hit by lightning and dies, which is a bit of a duff death, but it does the job. So at the end, Sorcerer and Mad Mardigan can look after the baby. Willow, Willow still doesn't talk to her ending, and as I say, it does feel a bit rushed. No goodbye to sort of Mad Mardigan. Could have easily been two movies or even like another half hour longer. Nice emotional end with Willow reunited with his family. And overall, just a great, high-budget, charming fantasy movie with great performance. Performances. and it's just pure escapism but as I say can't stress it enough Val Kilmer and Warwick Davis in this movie absolutely top form really really love it it's worth watching for them two performances alone but as I say this is sort of George Lucas's take on the fantasy Dungeons and Dragons uh, Lord of the Rings type deal and it really as I say it's a classic movie it's a classic kids movie it's one of my favorites and it's one I think you should definitely
definitely, definitely check out if you've never seen it. So thank you very much indeed for watching. Hope you enjoyed the review and I'll see you again soon. Don't concentrate on the finger or you will miss all that heavenly glory.